Black is Beautiful panel discussion that is in conjunction with the Kwame Brathway Black is Beautiful exhibition currently happening at AVA from February 6th to March 25th. Um, at this point, I'm going to pass the discussion over to John Fields. He is the director of AVA. Thank you, Joan. As Joan mentioned, uh, my name is John Fields, and I'm the Lydia Cheney and Jim Sokol Endowed Director of AVA. If this is your first time joining us for an AVA program, um, we are a visual arts center located on the campus of the University of Alabama at Birmingham. We present eight to 10 exhibitions a year, highlighting a mix of locally, regionally, nationally, and internationally acclaimed artists focused almost exclusively on contemporary art. We um, serve a diverse audience of university faculty, staff, and students, artists, museum patrons, and donors, uh, while simultaneously striving to keep our exhibitions directly relevant and engaging to our surrounding local and regional communities. Um, and we're immensely proud that all of our exhibitions and related programming are free. We are, of course, thrilled to have the opportunity to bring the Black is Beautiful photography of Kwame Brumathway exhibition to Birmingham. This exhibition is presented as part of the City of Birmingham's Forging Justice Initiative, which is a year-long commemoration of the 60th anniversary of civil rights in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, so a huge thank you to Kwame Brothwaite and the Kwame Brothwaite Archive for sharing these works and Kwame's story with us. I want to also acknowledge that this exhibition would not have been possible without Annette and the team at Aperture in New York. And of course, a big thanks to Joan and Heath, um, our colleagues at Artplay for organizing this event and all of the panelists for agreeing to participate. And so finally, I would like to hand things over to our moderator for today's discussion. Jackie Clay is an independent curator and the host of the wonderful series Monograph for Alabama Public Television. Jackie served as the executive director for the Coleman Center for the Arts before joining the Arts and Culture Program at the Mellon Foundation in 2021. So we are thrilled and honored to have her with us today. So without further ado, Jackie Clay. Thank you, John. Um, so I am going to share uh, three bios about the panelists today. Uh, then we'll pivot to them sharing slides of, and, and discussing their work. And then uh, I will have some prepared questions uh, for them. And after that, we'll open the entire program to questions from the audience. And I think, Joan, like we mentioned below, you can drop your questions in the chat. So uh, our first panelist currently serves as assistant professor of photography at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Jillian Marie Browning is an interdisciplinary artist pursuing themes of feminism, identity, and the contemporary Black experience. They enjoy puppies, comic books, the color pink, and radical feminism, which is my favorite. <laughs> they have had their, show, their work shown nationally and is included in the permanent collection of the Center of Photography at Woodstock, the Southeast Museum of Photography at Daytona Beach, and the University of Maryland's David C. Driscoll Center. Shalika Lassiter is the Collections and Exhibition Coordinator for the Abrams Engel Institute for the Visual Arts. Shalika is the owner of her own commercial photography studio, Miyako Studios, and she is the co-founder and board member for the Regenerate Society, a nonprofit committed to regenerating Birmingham through its seven initiatives uh, described as divisions of influence. Uh, Sydney A. Foster, originally from Montgomery, Alabama, is a photographer and director based in Atlanta, Georgia. Her work revolves around vibrancy, Southern Black culture, feminism, and the rawness of all people, places, and things. Sydney works. Sydney's work is heavily influenced by social equality, African American women, and being a voice of reason to those who, too, are afraid to speak up and out. Sydney has shot for the ACLU, Southern Poverty Law Center, the New York Times, HBO, and probably many, many others uh, since she wrote this bio. So uh, let's first start with Jillian Marie Browning. Dana, can uh, we hello, have everyone. Yeah, I need, I need slides. <laughs> uh, 
Um, hello, everybody. Um, so my work uh, can focuses on primarily self-portraiture. And so when I was sort of developing my art styles and I was kind of figuring out what I wanted to do as a photographer uh, and what was most important to me, uh, it was to tell the stories of like my own personal experience. And when I first started trying to get into photography or get into sort of exploring these things uh, conceptually, um, my, you know, it was to bring other people in, you know, use that, but also for me, I felt like it was a much more sort of authentic, um, way to talk about my own experiences by just using my own body when I, when I did that. So, um, when I use the term, uh, photographer, I don't really like being called that. I use an interdisciplinary artist, even though my work is definitely image based. Um, I like to do do the process that kind of shows my hand. And I, so I use historic and um, alternative processes to sort of uh, make imagery. A lot of my work is sculptural uh, and a lot of it also sort of um, uh, really has a lot of the fibers and things that I use to kind of make that work also influence a lot of the uh, concept as well. So you can go to the next slide. Um, I focus a lot on um, the contemporary black experience and everything that involves around that. So when it comes to sort of hair culture, uh, colorism, things along those lines, that's what I could talk about within my work. I also work a lot with fabric specifically um, because I like to talk about the, um, like referencing sort of like feminine things when it comes to my work, but also sort of craft as art. Um, and so I do a lot of tapestries and focusing on um, creating imagery on fabrics and showing motion and like sculptural things along those lines. We can go to the next slide. Um, here's some more work about hair. This particular um, piece involved the hair of me, my mother, and both of my sisters. Um, and very much so sort of talking about the scientific influence of black women um, and then our black women's influence on like modern science, but then also the idea of sort of the, the concept of good hair when it comes to black culture. This particular work uh, specifically is sort of a depth, a, a dive within sort of the the um, the hair of the women in my family, but also how that sort of thing sort of influences um, a lot of how you're treated within Black culture. Whether uh, it is sort of considered like this is your your have more value, you have more beauty, things like that. But then also um, talking to my sisters and, and my mother and getting their experiences with hair, because even though we all sort of have a similar experience, everybody's journey to sort of accepting their hair or kind of what's uh, accepting things about their body is sort of everybody's uh, sort of individual journey. And so um, doing this and getting them to actually, um, first of all, want to chop off chunks of their hair to give to me, that was very hard. Um, but then getting them to then talk about why that was such a difficult thing for them and then getting this and sort of displaying this as a sort of a scientific, um, like almost study. So there are, I've made a total in this series of the last couple of years of about like 75 of these hoops. And every time I do, I have to ask for more pieces of hair and it's just as hard every single time. You'd think they'd be used to it. You know, every couple months ago, oh, I need another piece of hair. And they're, it's a fight every single time. <laughs> All right, we can go to the next slide. Um, so this is sort of more of an earlier piece, and I always sort of include these when I'm talking about, um, when I talk about my work, uh, because when I was sort of trying to figure out sort of what I wanted to do with photography, how I wanted to display, and if I wanted to go into self-portraiture, a lot of that started off as performance. I think a lot of my work um, is very much so performance, whether it lives as imagery or as video or as a sculpture, because I'm physically putting my body into everything that I create. But there's also things that lead up to that. So these particular diptych is a series of 11 images. And um, I was, I coated myself in clay and I sort of photographed myself as it dried and fell off. Uh, and like whether, you know, the motions of my body or the motions of my face and how that influenced how that clay would then fall off of me. But then also the experience of what it was like to make this. I was sitting in a, in a, you know, a, a cold room alone since I make all of my work self-portraiture, but also it's, I'm a very insular artist. I don't really involve other people, minus like sometimes involving my sisters and my mother in my work. And so it's a lot of like talking about um, like intimacy and also solitude in a lot of the work that I create. 
And when I was making this, you know, it's me sort of sitting in this space, photographing this. And it's a lot of it is meditation. I can't really move very much when I was making this because I didn't want to very much so influence how that clay dried and fell off. Um, but when uh, I sort of like, you know, a lot of my work sort of very much so influences itself. And so this is very sort of the beginning of what my work has become now. Um, and also sort of helped me grow a lot as an artist when I was making this and kind of seeing how that felt and then going into other types of, of work and other things. We can go to the next slide. Uh, next slide, please. Dana? Yep. Um, and so this is some of my most um, recent work in my recent research. Um, so I do a lot of cyanotype. And so that sort of, it's a, it's a scientific, you know, chemistry process, um, but very accessible, easy to do. All you need is water and sunlight. So I love to sort of do this process and also teach this process to people. Um, but this particular body of work uh, is a study about um, basically reproduction and, and black female maternity. And so when I was sort of creating this work, I was researching a lot of black female maternity and sort of what that what that means, what that's like. I'm at the age where people start having children. Will not be me, but other people do like to have children. Um and so I was kind of looking at what like what what that would be like. You know, I was making this work and then my two sisters uh at the same time both got pregnant. Accidentally but super great. I have two nephews now. But when I was looking at that, I was sort of researching like, what is that going to be like for people? And I was doing research about the idea that uh, when you, if you are born with female reproductive organs, you are born with all the ovum you will ever have. So when my mother was growing inside of my grandmother, the ovum that would eventually become me was inside of her. And the connection that I have with the maternity, uh, the maternal line within my family and so when I was creating these pieces, I was using my body and then I was visually manipulating these, uh, these images together and sort of thinking about what would it look like? I feel like what, what it did a bot, what does a person look like growing inside of, of a human body floating in the abyss? you know, arms and legs sticking out different places. Like, what does that look like? And so in my brain, that's this kind of is what me growing inside of my mother might have looked like. And then I used plants from um, the my the land that I grew up on, my hometown, my grandmother's yard. I was just like, yeah, I can step out of trees. My mom was just like, I'm gonna let her do that. Um, and so I was doing that and sort of incorporating this connection of mother nature within my sort of uh, idea of what happens during conception or gestation. All right, we can go to the next slide. Uh, and sort of like running off of that sort of same thing, I was making a lot of work when I first moved to Birmingham about two years ago about intimacy and solitude and kind of what that would mean, moving away from my family and sort of everybody that I know and uh, kind of what that felt like, kind of what that feels like being being here alone and sort of creating these these larger pieces um, of work along those lines. Um, and this particular body of work um, is called this from a series I did call I Love You, Say It Back. And basically it's just sort of uh, a, a researching or thinking about the idea of, of um, sort of internal acceptance and internal love. All right, next slide. Um, and then so this particular piece of work, basically, I won't go super into it. I know I'm, I'm going a little over my time. Um, but so I make a lot of work in like about the, the, you know, contemporary black experience. I grew up in the South. Uh, that is a large influence of who I am as a person and sort of, uh, how that influences how I move around my everyday life. And so I made this particular work, uh, in 2016, right before Trump was elected. And, uh, this particular, uh, you know, sort of body of work is, uh, still from a performance that I made where I made this black substance, um, that was made out of, uh, like, you know, basically like charcoal and pieces of my hair and spit and, and other like bodily fluids and body parts and things. And I sort of was in physically and sort of, uh, uh, and metaphorically imparting my blackness onto this very sort of racist, um, like figure and, um, like say racist, like, you know, monument that is very prevalent all over where I grew up in my very rural Florida town. All right, next slide. Um, and this is more work about intimacy and talking about, uh, like, sort of, you know, how people, what intimacy means and what that is. And so I was making a lot of work about hair. Uh, and then also the idea, too, that um, a lot of, I mean, the idea that when my hair was loose natural, it's very curly. You can't really run your fingers through it. And so I was making this work about um, almost, like, 
wanting to seek out intimacy, but not being able to get it in the way that you want. And so like the idea that so like lots of people um, talk about like head massages or, or you know, you know, running ha- fingers through hair um, and how that can be like a very intimate moment. But for like, you know, me personally, maybe I don't want that or also it's not a thing that can be possibly done. But um, I think that's my final side. And that's kind of that's an, a, a grand overview. What my art is, what I do. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Shalika Lasseter. Um, I consider myself an overall creative artist because I dibble and dabble, whether it be like painting or poetry and dance. Um, but uh, I came to Birmingham probably 10 years ago to, co- co- to go to UAB uh, for school. And during that time in college, that's when I picked up a camera and that's when that kind of became my niche. Uh, this right here is one of my favorite pictures of Birmingham that I've taken. Uh, but uh, when I started taking pictures, I never thought that I would turn into a, a portrait photographer. Um, when people saw me with a camera in my hand, they started asking me, hey, you want to take my picture? So from there, um, I was like, hmm, could I actually turn this into something? So I started doing like graduation pictures and uh, like weddings and, and it kind of developed into commercial photography. Um, but because of my passion for as being a creative artist and other creative artists in the city, I started to um, explore different events that other creative artists did, whether they had like different showcases, um, different performances from like either rappers or singers and stuff like that. And I would go and take pictures for them and support them for free. And I would send them all the pictures. So through that, I ended up like building a relationship with a lot of different artists in the city and I became really big on collaboration. Um, you can go to the next slide. So like just meeting, like this is, uh, somebody, Justin Jamal that wanted me to collaborate with him just to get some good shots of him just in like in the city looking very like debonair. Um, it's one of my favorite pictures as well. And you keep moving on for next slide. And this is um another portrait picture. Her name is Bree. Um, it's it's very. I'm, I just love taking pictures of people because a lot of the time they'll say that I'm not photogenic or I don't know how to do this or I don't know how to pose. But like once I get them loose and comfortable and I capture um the shots, they'll see the picture and be like, Oh my gosh, I never expected this. This is so amazing. So, uh. That's really where my passion comes from as far as me helping people who I take pictures of like like um reveal themselves in their own identity, if that makes sense. You can go on to the next slide. And as you can see, I really love like vibrant colors. Um I just whatever you see with your eye, that's what I, I really love to capture. That is always my goal. You can go to the next slide. This is one of um, the events that I attended where I was supporting some um, different artists in the city. You can go to the next slide. This is one of my um, wedding wedding uh, photography pictures. This is probably one of my favorite wedding shots. Um, I just happened to see like this uh, uh, area of just a whole bunch of flowers. I was like, hmm, I wonder if I can slide these rings on here. And it actually worked and the leaves didn't break and I got the shot. It was great. Uh, all right, next slide. And now I'm pretty sure everybody recognizes it's nice to have you um, in Birmingham. I had to get a shot of that. Okay, is that the last one? Yeah. Thank you so much. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Sydney A. Foster, and feel free to just stay in it and just go through the slides as I talk. Um, photography for me has been a lifesaver. Uh, it came to me during a time where I was just like at a low and I wasn't being seen, so I began to use it as a, a journal, but like a visual journal. 
And the types of people that I like to capture, they're everyday people, but now those everyday people have turned into superstars and all different types of folks from different walks of life. But when I'm having these intimate moments with people, I'm able to discover more of me as they are discovering them. Um, and Shalika said it best, like people just feel like they're not capable or able or beautiful. And we all are in our own regards. Um, and like, as of right now, I'm like digging deeper into self-love. So like, I can understand more now than ever why people may have felt like, oh, I'm not beautiful. Or, oh, I'm not this. Um, but we are all of those things. We are, we are everything, all of the things that we think less than of ourselves and all of the good things that make us all beautiful. Um, I work with analog photography, which is film photography, and I do a lot of digital work. But overall, I would just say my photography is how I see people and how I choose to share people with the world so they can be seen in that light too, in the light in which they they deserve to be in. Um, yeah, color is a good thing for me. It's a big thing for me. Like that drives a lot of my work. Uh, some of my earlier photos started just from walking around uh, during my lunch breaks at the Capitol in Montgomery, Alabama, um, and just walking around during like certain residencies or walking around on campus when I was attending Alabama State, walking around in my neighborhoods and just getting lost wandering as I'm discovering. But that's that's what my work is rooted in. Um, and I hope to continue to inspire people and just let people know that they can do it all. And at the end of this, if we have time, I'm happy to talk more about any photograph that resonates with anyone. Thank you, um, Sydney and Zoe Marie and Felica. So uh, now I'm going to pose a few questions to all three of you. Um, and you're welcome to not respond to any of them if they're not good. And uh, Folks, if questions come up for you as I'm asking these, please uh, enter those into the chat and um, Joan and John will be will be looking at them. So uh, first, uh, oh, and I'll also say, you know, we're here for Black is Beautiful. I encourage folks to go see the exhibition that does not close until March 25th. I looked this up. <laughs> so make sure to, to go visit. Um, so the first thing, my first question is uh, thinking about Kwame Brathwaite's uh, photography and also thinking about all three of you, you folks' photography. You know, in Brathwaite's case, he was living and working in the Bronx and like his community and um, documenting that community and uh, attending events were was an important part of his practice, his early practice. So I wanted to hear from you guys if you feel like a few of you have mentioned being from the South, like how that influences you, but also like maybe other communities that are form formed, maybe not just through geography. Anyone can jump in. <laughs> uh, I'll go ahead and jump in. Um, so. I would say def definitely for me. So like the work that I create is all about like my experiences growing up in the South. And although I don't really necessarily photograph other people, um, I make my work specifically um, for the people who are going to understand it. And so like when I was like, uh, when I make my work, I'm talking about things that maybe are specifically about me, but it's for people to look at and like get it. And so when I make work about hair, um, I'm making that work for someone to like look at it. And if they understand it, then like that is for them. It's like the idea of like, when I talk about like, the smell of a certain kind of hair lotion that my mom used to use on me or like oil sheen or things like that. Like I'm making that work for that, for people that will get that. Um, but also like it's it, to form that connection as well, because I like, you know, my work is shown in galleries and museums and that kind of thing. And I feel like for a lot of black people specifically, they feel like that space is not for them. And so I make my work very unapologetically for people to go in those spaces and understand that like that space is for them and that space um you know can can be for everybody um and then like also i i make you know work specifically yes about my blackness but also i make work about my body i make work about uh, all the other parts of identity and so that's for that too it's for people who identify you know as fat people who identify as queer like i make all of that work for those specific people 
I would say for me, I definitely boldly make my work for black folks um, to consume, but I also make my work for all people to just sit with. Like I'm a super pensive person and I like for people to just sit with my work. So I might do something to insinuate eyes to like, for like the viewer to like face to face view it. And that could be like anybody that could be somebody black, that could be somebody white. Um, I like for my work, if if you're not black and if you're uh, are of another race, like I want you to sit with it and possibly like think about what that person may have gone through. Um, but I also make my work for the youth because me being the youngest person and just not being heard, I try to like create work that like resonates with young folks. Um, and it that could just be like having a young person in a picture and them seeing themselves like in a museum that they aren't supposed to go to or it's not like publicly offered to so that's who I'm making my work for and that's who I'm drawing into spaces who I'm drawing people into spaces where they typically wouldn't go and gather um I would say that I don't necessarily do a lot of like conceptual or series type work but I love when somebody comes to me with like an idea and I can take that and blow it up. They'll come to me with like a little flame and we're going to turn it into a bonfire. So that's why like collaboration is really big with me. Um, and then just being able to work with natural light and be outside or wherever, because usually I'll just ride around B Birmingham scoping locations and I'll look at the most like let's say abandoned looking run down place and oh that's it that's the place right here the place where everybody else will overlook that's where I'm going to turn into something thank you so um hearing that in addition to geography there's a, like a lot of things that inform your work and uh, all three of you I, I was going to ask also if there's um artists um uh, you know just broadly or uh, or practices that kind of impacted you and influenced you. I, I also noticed in the chat early on, someone asked about David Hammonds for uh, Jillian, but um, for all three of you, are there, and, and they don't have to be visual artists, you know, if there's there's other kind of things that have really influenced your practice individuals, we'd love to hear here. I think for me right now, music influences my work heavily. Uh, as I've matured in my age of being so young and 28, I'm listening more and words mean so much more to me than they've ever done. And Kendrick Lamar is, he's resonating with me so deeply and he's like influencing some new bodies of work that I'll be working on. Um, and just other artists, you know, you have like your Gordon Parks and your Kwame's, like I think subconsciously or ancestrally, like I've embodied them. And like it comes through in my work and I'm not intentionally doing it, but it just happens. So other photographers and musical artists for me. I say I'm influenced. I am influenced by other creative artists. And when they're either they're making music, they're painting, whatever, that's what influences me. Just seeing other people create. Uh, for me, definitely, it's, uh, it's sort of artists that are very unapology uh, unapologetically themselves and kind of create work that is very true to who they are. And so, like, sort of very traditionally, if you look at, like, you know, other Black women making arts, like uh, like Sonia Clark is a gigantic, uh, like, influence for me. Um, like Lorna Simpson, um, absolutely David Hammonds, and, like, specifically um, uh, his performance work. I saw that work, you know, pretty early in my career, and I was like, okay, so, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make performance art because <laughs> I do a lot of that stuff too. Uh, and like, you know, TJ Delarue Norris and like artists like that, Kenya Robinson, lots of, of, of you know, people who are making work very unapologetically um, about themselves and, and kind of, I feel like, don't let the art world sort of silence them and what they do. And I, I really, really appreciate it. So to Sydney specifically, like hearing uh, you mention music, because again, just pointing back to the exhibition, like it's beautiful, beautiful, um, Brathwaite was documenting like har the early on, he was documenting the hard bop scenes. And it was like super cool for me to see because this is like my neighborhood right now. Like, w what is the music that influences you? And like, how does that show up in, in the work? Heard you. So for me, like, 
I'm always listening to music. When I'm on set, I'm listening to music. If I'm on, on location, like I make sure it's a speaker, like something, like I'm telling my assistant to just like play something. And um, lately, though, it has been more conscious rap or just hip hop um, things that are real. Uh, I'm, I'm working with an artist right now, Jonathan Michael Avant, and his new body of work just talks about togetherness as a community and being black and his like mental health struggles and like what it's like to be a black man. So that's influencing, influencing me. Um, yeah. I mean, all types of music, just Erica Badu. Like I love how free she is and that's helping me right now in my photographic journey to just be freer and just create loosely and just do whatever. And like, don't worry about the judgment just produce the work like I think as artists we get so hung up and like oh I don't want to make this piece because it might offend this person but just do it and like allow others to judge the work like your our job I feel like as artists is just to produce the work and produce the work of the people thank you so uh, I have another question from for all three of you, uh, but before I just want to remind our audience that if you have any questions that are coming up, please uh, put them in the chat. We're paying attention and uh, John and Joan will get them in the queue. So um, to our panelists, uh, this is the, identity as a term has like come, come up a few times uh, in different ways. Uh, I know thinking again about Brathwaite and his, um, he, he seemed to embrace a highly politicized blackness and uh, eventually kind of what folks call pan-Africanism. Um, but also, you know, currently when we think about identity, we think about it in ways that are intersectional. So like we have these complex compound identities that influence one another and are not separate. I, I was gonna ask, you know, I've heard folks the panelists mentioned their identity are there are there identities that inform your work that maybe are less uh immediately legible for folks and like it could be like faith for example um and, and belief systems and and how they may kind of show up in your work Is, is that a no for the middle? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I mean, identity for me, I'm I'm stepping into my identity, to be honest with you. I've been running from it for so long. Um, just because just simply conforming, conforming to rooms that I've been in, like buildings that I've worked in, military. Um, so I guess I can speak to some of the things that I've just named off, like, the military is a part of me and like it shows up in my work. It could show up in shades of browns and greens um, and it could be minimalistic sometimes. Some some of my work can be that, but also, um, man, my, my queerness is not showing up in the work like how I would like for it to. But I think as I'm discovering myself, like I'll show more of that. I can say like I've been photographing more queer folks or like I'll go to protests to like show up and support them um and display that work um my blackness definitely shows up like it's inevitable I can't run from it and hair like black hair natural hair that shows up too and that's a part of me I would say with me I mean since I am a self-portrait artist like most pictures are pictures of me and so I mean but I mean I feel like with some of it you can't really I don't always purposely try to put like every aspect of my identity within a piece or like what it means. But I mean, I can't really divorce myself from all the things that, that are me when I'm, when I'm making work because it is literally my entire personality and, and per, in the body. Um, and so I feel like, you know, I don't always try to purposely say every single thing, but it's really hard for, for me, um, 
as just like an artist and, and someone who looks the way that I look to, to not have my identity be a part of it. And that's sort of also like um, an argument that some people have had. Like, so like the idea that if you don't live in a very sort of generic body, then everything that you, that you make is going to be about the thing that you are, whether you intend it to be or not. And I think that's something that I kind of actually struggled with when I first started making work. Cause I was like, do I want to lean so heavily into doing this? Do I want to be more generic? And for me, I, it was basically like, it's almost impossible for me to be generic just in the, in me as a person, because just living in the body that I live, live in is such a political statement. And so everything, I'm just going to lean into that. I'm just going to be that and have everything that I am be the influence to the work that I make because I, I can't divorce myself from that. Um, I feel like since I mostly I take pictures of other people, it, it it's kind of like people end up coming to me and find a new identity in themselves. Um, like if a musician books me, they want me to document their identity as a musician. So, thank you. Just doing a quick time check, um, and then uh, Shalika, there's been a request from the audience that uh, the panelists share their uh, share their details about. Yes, okay, <laughs> got me. <laughs> um, I've got some longer questions here. Oh, I have a good one for Shalika. You know, I, I read um, I read your bio, visited your website, did some research. And uh, you have multiple projects that are collaborative, you know, so the, the organization you co-founded and are on the board of, and also this project, the exhibit. Um, I was wondering how like community and collaboration kind of show up in your work and wh why that seems important to you. Um, I, in reference to uh, what I said earlier about that being big and how I used to go out and support different creative artists and um, take pictures and stuff. So um, I kind of came up with the con the concept of the exhibit. is It was a two part initiative. Um, I'm still working on three and four. We'll see how that goes. But um, so I kind of combined my love for culture and arts, and with like my degree in museum studies and my passion for photography and the relationships I built with the creatives. Um, I came up with this first. Uh, event it was called the exhibit gallery one the mixer um so this was a showcase where i had singers i had poets spoken word um uh a saxophonist i had rappers just a whole collection and then i had photographers and visual artists set up like around the stage area to show off their own work too um and the proceeds for this went to the lupus foundation because i have a cousin who is a lupus warrior um, cause I always wanted to make sure like whatever I was doing, support is, um, like a charity in a community or something that meant something close to me. Um, the second event I did, um, it was gallery two, uh, the cypher. It was like this, uh, it was a poetry hip hop battle. So I had rappers versus spoken word artists go on stage and there was no music or anything. So everything was acapella. Um, and it really it, it was a really organic moment because people were able to hear and feel the different emotion, even though the cadences were a little different between the two different types of artists. It turned out really well. And those proceeds uh, went to the Sickle Cell Foundation because I have a friend that um, has sickle cell. So I always wanted to bring it back around to make sure I'm giving back to the community in some way. Thank you for sharing, Shalika. And I also, uh, another pitch for the exhibition, Black is Beautiful, uh, because it really connects what you're describing, your practice that uh, is across disciplines and uh, community-centered, and also uh, in uh, fundraising and supports the community. Uh, it connects with Brathwaite's practice. You can read more about it in the catalog, and you can see it in the exhibition at AVA. Um, I think we are approaching a time where we can ask a few audience questions. I think John may have uh, a, a little a little cue of them. Is that correct, John? Um, I I was going oh, to ask oh, oh. the Q and A's. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I uh, we do have one question in the chat. Um, so someone is asking, um, would Jillian be willing to talk about the process of combining um, cyanotype and digital, if that's um, if that's what's happening in the maternity issues? And I said, thank you so mm -hmm. much. Yeah, 
Um, so yeah, I do. A lot. So my work is, is like very alternative process based, which is like, you know, an analog process, but I combine digital elements into that. So I make digital negatives. And so when I was making those pieces, I shot that work digitally. I put it into Photoshop. I sort of edited things around kind of with stacking uh, images on top of each other. And then those images are actually, they're three feet by eight feet long. So they're quite large. And so I do, I create large uh, digital negatives with them. So it's like a lot of very big, larger than me. I'm only five, six, um, like piece of, um, like, you know, this thing I'm printing out and I use that to then create the cyanotype. So a cyanotype is a, uh, a contact printing process. So basically, so basically you sensitize like fabric or paper or any substrate with the chemical and it makes it then light sensitive. And so, so anything you put on top of it, so that's the contact part, you put something on top of it, expose that to the sun. And then anything that the sun does not touch will then stay the color of the substrate and then everything else turns blue. And so when I make those negatives, I'm sort of like making that image on top. I like lay, I would lay these giant negatives on top. Uh, I put a big piece of plexi on top of them and then I expose them in the sun and that's how those are made. So, uh, you know, all, all of my work, even though I say, you know, historical analog processes, I use a digital element into all of them because um, I need sort of to make those really big negatives to make this larger than life work. Um, and I think that also is a, is a way for me to sort of, um, you know, combine a little bit a little bit more imagination in some of my work and then uh, still use like a process that really shows my hand in, in like the actual printing aspect of it. Thank you for explaining that. Um, that piece is absolutely like stunning um, and larger than life. Um, really all of your work is just phenomenal. And I'm so excited that um, we all got a chance to um, experience that even if it's just digitally um, over Zoom. I have a personal question that I wanted to ask. Um, I know that a viewer asked if, um, you know, how they could follow your work, but I was wondering if you could also share and um, thank you for dropping your information in the chat. But if you could also share um, any current works that you are currently working on or things that you're like, you know, inspired by right now. Um, if some of it's under wraps, um, totally understand, but um, also like where we could see your art right now. Um, if you're exhibiting anywhere, or if you have anything coming up. Not everybody jumping at once. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start. Um, so I'm currently working on a new solo exhibition that's going to be opening up um, at Gallery 4, or like Room 421 in Birmingham. Um, or is it 412? Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, but it's a, a body of I'm exploring more things about hair. Uh, and specifically, I'm bringing my sisters and my mom into it again. Um, yeah, Gally Portel. Thank you, John. Um, and I'm bringing my sisters and my mom into that again. And sort of talking about um, sort of a lot of the experiences when I was younger about like just the feeling or the um, the the sort of ritual of hair braiding and like oiling your scalp and like, you know, things, those, those things. And I'm going to be um, sort of making some, some video work, uh, talking to my sisters and my mother, um, about that. And then also I'm going to be, um, hopefully making a wig. We'll see. I haven't ever done that before, but I watch a lot of YouTube videos, so we'll see what happens. Um, and so I've been working on, on that. And then I have some things that are currently open, um, uh, in like other states. So nothing in Birmingham right now until June. Um, but I post usually on Instagram when I have exhibitions and stuff. So. And also behind the scenes things and pictures of my dog. So if you're interested in a tiny little dog, my Instagram has lots of pictures of her on it. So I want to say since I've started working at Ava, I have kind of transitioned into like an object photographer. So um it's a really new experience for me. So that's really what I've been kind of practice and work on. So when we have exhibitions, I've started like taking pictures of them and seeing what I can see with my eye as far as an object versus a person. And it's so completely different, but it's been a fun experience. It's, it's a learning experience. Pending for myself. Personal projects, uh, one in particular that I'll share is called Pray the Gateway, and that is like really reaching 
into the depths of my identity, things that I have been running from, things that I have experienced. Um, and my hopes are to help, of course, queer people um, become okay with themselves and just love them deeply, but also those who aren't queer to hear and see queer folks a little better and um, just grant a better understanding to like, treat people better um because like it is it does a number on your mental health uh being queer and just going through like the depths of rejection and what'll happen or what you will receive what you won't receive or it just gets real deep for me so that's something I'm working on personally and then I do have two exhibitions coming up in Atlanta some group shows and then possibly one coming up in Birmingham late September um and I'll be rolling out my music video debut here in a few weeks so make sure you check my Instagram out uh at sydney at sydney.a.foster for that that's what I'm that's what I'm working on so is it is it um you're both the musician and the director or you're directing a music video you know what so the project is on it should be on all streaming platforms, but it's called The Discovery, and it's it's Jonathan Michael Avent. I'm actually on the project. I do like this poetry thing from time to time. And, um, yeah, he put me on there. And the way he positioned it and composed the track, I was just like, wow. You know, because I don't like hearing myself talk. And I, I'm being heard by a lot of people now. And now I have to listen to it because I like the album and it's, it's a bit full circle. So the video is in adjacent to one of the tracks on his project called Together. Nice. Jonah? Yeah. Jonah, Jonah, I have a question. Mm-hmm. If I may. Oh, for Jillian? <laughs> okay. No, it's primarily for Sydney, actually. But I, if if Sydney or uh, I mean, if Jillian or Shalika have an opinion, I of course would love to hear that too. But Sydney, since you brought up the "Don't Pray the Gay Away" work, um, you know, the art world sort of tends to silo commercial photography away from like the other quote unquote uh, fine arts. And so you are an artist who makes their living through their photography. And I'm just curious, like, do you ever catch yourself like making this distinction? And, you know, do you consider something like the series you were just talking about? Is that more fine art than your commercial projects? Or is it just sort of all the same for you? I'm just curious, like what your relationship is with that? No, that's a loaded question. That's a good question. So um, just, I'm gonna just take the question as you said it, but I consider that body of work to be more fine art, but I'm using practices of commercial photography when it comes to lighting to light it. Some of it will be in a studio and I will like use some elements that I've learned in commercial photography, whether that be uh, a lighting tech to help me light it so I can focus more so on the creative and the storytelling. Um, But I honestly, John, like things are interchanging in my world. Like, And in the commercial world, like you can create a piece of fine art on a commercial set or a commercial job, but I may not be able to use it depending on who my client is. Some clients may be like, you can use it in your archives or in your own body of copyrighted work. Um, So, yeah, I I hope that answers. Uh, I'll jump Um, into a little bit. Is that like, um, so a lot of. I feel like it's just like what, what context is put in, whether it can be called like fine art or commercial. I mean, like I've seen so many exhibitions of like Richard Avedon and that's literal straight up fashion work from Vogue. So like, I think it's just like wherever somebody puts it is what category they put it in, um, which, you know, isn't really fair. I think that it can be, you know, the, the whole idea of, of like, you know, commercial being less of something. It, I don't think that necessarily is the truth. Well, thank you um, for joining us today. And um, before we end, I did also want to ask Jackie, like, do you have any upcoming projects um, that you want to share or things that are inspiring you before we leave? Uh, Yeah, I can. Actually, uh, I'm going to do a I'm curating a show with uh, Rachel Higgins, who is uh, also an artist. 
queer artist from Birmingham. This is some of their work uh, at Ground Floor Contemporary in October. So um, keep your eyes peeled for that. Uh, and the next episode of Monograph will be out in April of this year. Uh, it's We shot at Firehouse uh, Community Center, uh, Arts and Community Center. Uh, I've learned to play the drums and guitar. So that gets you there. <laughs> That's so awesome. Um, I am so looking forward to following all your projects. Um, thank you so much for um, taking your time out today on International Women's History Day. Um, and for anybody who wants to uh, follow our panelists or Jackie, um, you can see their information in the chat. Also, Black is Beautiful. Um, the exhibition will be at AVA from uh, till March 25th. And um, we thank you for oh, joining us. Joan, Joan, Sydney had one last thing she, she wanted oh, to say. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no worries. No worries. I just wanted to say, like, I'm super grateful for Kwame's work and him being a keeper of images. Um, I think he pushes a lot of our work, like being Black, like, just a lot of our work comes through, like, a lot of his work. And, um yeah, he's he's done some really phenomenal things. And to hear Shalika just talk about like how she collaborates, like Kwame was doing the same thing. And Jillian, to hear you like just stand firm and be passionate about the subject matter that you talk about so boldly, like that's another thing Kwame was doing and it took courage. And it's all about like trusting our processes and journeys. So like, keep going, <laughs> keep going. Yeah. And we did have one question about this um, recording, if it's going to be available in the future. It will um, usually um, takes about a couple weeks, but then we put it up on uh, the Alice Stevens uh, YouTube. Um, I can also send the link um, to that YouTube to everyone who registered. Um, does anybody have any close other closing remarks? Good. All right. Well, I hope everybody has a great day and thank you for joining us.